Welcome to the Jersey to Vegas podcast. This podcast talks about the hows, whys, and what's next in your life journey. If you're looking to start fresh and turn over a new leaf, you're in the right place. Now, here's your host, Pete Isip. Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to the Jersey to Vegas podcast, episode number 48. We are here in Las Vegas, uh, 90 degrees, even hotter. It was like 98 the other day, but today it's actually like 60-something, and then it'll be 80. Uh, but it is nice and sunny, as usual, here in Las Vegas. And in New Jersey, it was raining, from what I've heard. Uh, my parents said they had a little bit of a blackout, and I'm sure... Um, they lost power, and maybe some of you guys did too, since most of the listeners are from New Jersey. And I just want to say hello. Um, it is episode 48. What am I going to talk about today? I wrote a letter to myself. I didn't even know um, that I did it um, on April 6th, 2022. And it kind of sums up almost the year of what's happening here and what's going on and what I'm going to do. So if you guys are ready for that, I'm not going to take a quick break and go into an edit. I'm going to just read the goddamn thing right now is what I'm going to do. It is early. Here we go. And let's let's start it off. Let's start it off. I'll start off that way. Uh, it's called Thoughts. Thoughts. Now, tr- this is free writing one draft. I didn't, you know, forgive me if there's misuse of words. Forgive me if there's improper enunciation of some words. And forgive me for, um, I don't know, forgive me for whatever is about to happen right now. Thoughts. There are times you feel insignificant. There are times you feel like a piece of shit. There are times you feel like you deserve nothing, and there are times you feel alone. It's because you are. You're alone in your head, alone in your mind, and alone in your spirit. Your life was taken away, and you used to be so happy. You see pictures and videos of pure joy, content, and fun. Why do these memories feel so far away? Why do you feel so alone? The emptiness, the dark... The never-ending search for happiness or being happy once again feels unreachable. What is this? It's the bottom. It's the place you wish for no one to ever experience. Unfortunately, it's a place that only exists in your head, in your thoughts, and in your mind. But you want to know what else? It is, Pete. Your beginning. Your stance. Your chance to rebuild who you are once again. Will this be hard? Yes. Will this be uncomfortable? Yep. Will you be lost? Certainly. But all you have to do is one thing. Try. Because the shot you think you are, the things you think are true, are not even close to the truth that everyone else sees. You are resilient. You are strong. You can make it through this, no matter how hard it may feel. I love you, Pete. That's a letter to myself. And it really breaks down a lot of um, things that I wish I never had to talk about. Like, I I come onto these podcasts sometimes and I really feel bad. Because I'm like, am I just going to bring people down? Am I going to bring people down? Like, my energy going to zap people's energy when it's like that's not really the point but really what is the point of this podcast you know like i'm not going to be here and be a mind mind life mindful mind life, what mental health advocate like i don't you know i'm not a therapist i'm not a person that's like no i'm just i'm just sharing my experiences with you guys i'm just sharing what it is i learn with a camera and a pretty decent microphone you know and that's it that's all i'm doing and Maybe a listener out there can relate. And that's always, that was always the mission. That is always the goal. You know, a lot of people think, like, why do you do, why do, you do podcasts? Are you trying to make money off it? You know, uh, you have any sponsors? And that's not, that's not, that's not what it's for. 
right? It's for me to do this. Like I wrote a letter to myself which I completely didn't know. I was actually looking to see if I had a topic of discussion for this week. And this popped up, and I was like, man, this is a fucking pretty good letter. You know, because I wasn't feeling that great today. I wasn't feeling that that well. But now I feel stronger. Because it shows that I believe in myself. You know, I, I am, I'm there. I'm at the cusp of like, this is, it's time. You know, it's time, and I'm sure at some point it becomes chemical. You know, and the one thing that um, I talk about with my therapist is, like, I have to understand the difference between feeling chemical. So it's like some days I just might not feel good, right? And those are the days where I can use skill and use things to, to, to feel better, right? That's like today. But then there's days where it just doesn't work, right? And that's chemical, which means the chemical imbalance in the head, like, it's just... I never understood why it did not, sometimes skills don't work, or why I feel like, I feel so defeated sometimes, and I, I'm doing my best to try to feel good, like I'm really trying my best to fucking feel good, and you know, lie to myself, and at least that would work, but someday it just doesn't, you know, and that's really the difference between um, just having a bad day, I guess you can, and having a chemical day. So deciphering that and journaling and then we go over in therapy and she'll be like, yeah, it sounds more chemical than it is um, your mood, you know. So it's it's pretty cool to to see this part. So this like this one is I didn't know I didn't know when reading this that this letter was going to turn to the positive. I thought it was just like a vent, you know, like it was going downhill. And then all of a sudden, oh, shit, It, it went uphill. It went uphill. And uh, it's good to see that, that energy. You know, it's good to see the, the positive energy that I do have, that I do portray. But at the same time, it's, there's days that I kind of don't want to, right? I don't want to do it. I don't want to portray it. I want to sit in normalcy. I want to sit in level rather than trying to achieve all the time, we're trying to do something um, all the time, but it's cool, you know, this is the bottom, I like this line pretty much the best, it's, it's the bottom, like, what is this, it is the bottom, it's a place you wish for no one to ever experience, unfortunately, it's a place that only exists in your head, in your thoughts, and in your mind, why, because we put us, we put ourselves there, you know, there's a tick, a pattern, a habit, something that, that pulls us into those moments, and we get pull, sucked into it really fast, right? I get sucked into that hole really fast, and, like, I'll try to get myself out of it, but by the time I notice what's happening, it's already too late, right? It's already too late, but I've been doing an exercise uh, more recently, um, and, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough one because you have to catch you have to catch yourself all the time when you're doing these exercises to feel better because, you know, if you're in the bottom, right, and you're in, in the darkness, it's a very, I always say, addicting place to be. It's a very um, easy place to get to since, you know, the world is negative, right? The world is negative. Everyone loves negative. Everyone loves um, watching videos of people getting hurt. Everyone loves watching videos of people making fun of each other and praying. It's negative. The world is negative. You look for the the trauma in things, right? Oh my God, I can't believe this happened. You know, it's, it's, it's a negative world. So it's easy to get there. A lot of times we don't like to see the positive. We don't like to see the, the sunshine. We don't like to see the sunshine on other people. But I do like the golden ticket. So that's always my, my favorite. That's always my favorite cry moment is uh, AGT, America's Got Talent, and they hit the fucking golden buzzer and you're crying automatically because that's the best. That is absolutely the best feeling ever. <laughs> I never, yet have I not, not cried <laughs> um, during AGT. Oh, it just gets me, man. It just gets me. So let me talk about the thing um, that I've been doing that maybe you guys could jump on it too. You know, it'll probably help you. And I'm going to wipe my nose because I definitely feel a booger running down my nose. The exercise that I've been um, practicing, since it is still practice, right? It's nothing that I have mastered, is um, 
I don't know if there's a name for it, but I would like to say turning mind. But it's more of when you start to feel and think, not even feel, when you start to think negatively, you change it automatically and find out the things that you're grateful for. Now, not not the things that make you happy, not things, not, not happiness. Like, don't like think of things that you want uh, or trying to achieve. You know, people think like thinking of like a million dollars as something they're grateful for. No, something in your reach, something you have already. What are you grateful for? You know, like my, I'm grateful for my arms. You know, I'm grateful for my fingers. I'm grateful for my kids, things that I have already. I can't say that uh, I'm grateful for um, a job that I don't have, you know, or a car I don't have. It's that's wishing that's more of imagery, right? But being grateful for or showing gratitude towards something that is yours, something that you can feel, see, touch, hear, you know, and just change in that moment. So, there, for example, oh man, I can't believe I'm fucking, what, I feel like a piece of shit right now. I'm not even doing anything. I'm sitting on the couch, my kid's right there, we're watching TV. Man, I could be doing something else. Bang. Stop. What am I grateful for? Right now, I get to hang out with Sage, and we're sitting down watching TV. Right? Because these moments are not going to be here any much longer. Then once they go to school, it's it. I'm not going to be sitting here watching TV with, TV with her at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's just not going to happen anymore. So I sit there and I cherish the moment of me watching PBS Kids or whatever we're watching and just sitting there while she asks me tons of questions. Then we could go into another one. She'll ask me tons of questions. And I'm like, what the fuck are you asking me questions for? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, nor did I even understand what you just said to me. I don't, gibberish is what you, you said. I don't know what it is you said. Stop. Take a moment. I'm grateful for Sage asking me questions and enjoying the fact that she can ask me questions. Again, when is she going to stop asking me questions? And or if I tell her to I don't know, and or tell her to be quiet. Maybe she will stop asking me questions. And I don't want that to ever stop. You know, especially when she gets older in a time of need. I don't want her to think of me as someone that just shuns her away. That just says, like, shut up and go on the iPad. Shut up and just, you know, because I'm fed up. I'm fucking frustrated. So just be quiet. Yeah, there's times you do that. But I don't want to develop that habit either to where... She's going to feel embarrassed or just bad, bad, I guess feel bad about asking me something that might be so simple. You know, that's so just little examples of what I've been doing uh, for that. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good. And it's also work, you know, it's uh, a little bit different than I'm used to because usually I'll just ride the train. I'll ride the the sad train for a while, and then like I'll just shake my head and then try to like forget it. Right? I never replaced it. I didn't replace the feeling. It didn't replace the thought. I just tried to like dead end it, and then be like, "You're so strong. You have willpower. Don't think that way for a little bit. No, just keep thinking that way, but spin it. How is this? What are you grateful for in this position right now?" Now, I can think about a thousand things I'm really mad about every day, every day. But, you know, what are we, what are we grateful for? You know, what are you grateful for? Maybe you have to make a list of it. You know, things that you have that you have gratitude towards. And that's it, because you have it presently, not what you want. A little bit different. That is it. What did I do this weekend? We, it was Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. I say to everyone because everyone's, everyone's a mother now. There's no, I'm a non-binary, non-binary parent. I have nothing. I'm not a mom. I'm not a dad. I'm not a not, not, not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
So on Saturday, I went to a one-year anniversary celebration for our gym, Ron Jitsu, uh, BJJ, and or Smash Iron Fitness. It, is, uh, it was cool, right? It opened up with pretty much the entire school. I never knew that we had this many students because I don't really go to the gym at nighttime. I'm, I'm the morning guy, right? I'm the morning person. And seeing that many people line up on the mats and sit down, uh, was really awesome to see. I did not know how big um, or how many members there actually were, right? Because I only probably roll with from two to ten people tops um, during the morning. Also, um, I don't know what I was going to say there. But anyway, there was uh, belt promotions, which means he gave a lot of belts out. So they started off with the little kids, so cute. I There was definitely a crying moment for me. Um, when one of the instructors, he's a, uh, he, he instructs the kids, he teaches the kids, his name's uh, Dustin, and he gave his daughter a belt promotion, and I, I don't know, I, I lost it, I was just like, yeah. he's like, this one's a very special one to me, I was like, waterworks, me and like two other girls over here, it was me and two other, <laughs> two other girls that I, uh, I pretty much, I work out with, and uh, we were all just crying the, <laughs> that, that entire time, so it was pretty is pretty funny. And then everyone else started getting promotions. So like people that I've watched grow within the past couple months, you know, people that I've started with, um, that are white belts, that are purple belts, brown belts, and they got their next belt. And it was cool to see, you know, it was cool to see the people, um, celebrate their progress. You know, it's, it was cool to watch them emotionally be there in that moment, like, it was a surprise. You know, he didn't tell anybody. It's not like, you know, it's not like you show up for 60 days and all of a sudden you get a belt type thing. Or you go there for a year and then you're guaranteed a belt or uh, a stripe. It's not. It's earned. It's uh, uh, how he thinks you represent the sport, the school, yourself. And it's uh, very, very awesome to see. And watching people not cry but feel like they're, some of them wanted to because I was, I was for them. You know, I was doing it. I was crying for them inside. I think I had a thousand tears the entire time. And then watching them laugh and um, just be very happy in that moment because it shows that all their hard work is paying off. Right? Their hard work of them showing up multiple times in a week. Strength training, competing, being a good person outside is showing towards their lifestyle, their BJJ lifestyle, they would say, or their martial arts journey. And it's not done for them. Like, you know, and a belt is a belt, but it doesn't mean you are any better than anyone else. Right, sure, it may show you have more experience. You might know better. You will teach them, but there, you know, you never know. There's a lot of people that are under that ranking that are, are good as well. You know, they're just uh, it's just waiting for their time, and it's 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 awesome because it gives you something to work towards. You know, so again, I'm super happy to be a part of it, and it was super cool to watch that celebration. Then afterwards, there's an open mat, which means like uh, they kind of just run a clock, and everyone kind of just fights each other. You know. Um, I'm sitting on the outside because my knee's still bum- bummed up. It's still banged up. It felt like a bum. And I would just sit there and watch, just itching, itching, and itching, and ans- asking or uh, answering a thousand questions about the knee. And it's feeling better. So that's good, right? I did not get approved for my MRI. So I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. <laughs> We're trying to do something else with, the, you know, finagle the insurance company, I guess. Thank you, United States fucking medical system, healthcare system. And. Um, the doctor says it's a, a tear, but you know, if I can't, I don't ha- have too much trouble extending it. It's mustn't, it doesn't seem like it'll need surgery. So I'm just doing my PT. I fucking called up Will, uh, from dynamic PT and I was like, yo, please, here, please help me. Cause I can't just do nothing right now. And I, I don't agree with having to wait for an MRI. I don't agree with having to wait for anything. So I rested it after I rested it. It's time to, for it to get to work. Right. So I'm doing my own stuff. I'm doing my own PT on my couch at the gym. I'm icing all the time. I'm heating all the time. I'm doing my extensions. I'm doing everything I can because I need to fucking get this thing better. And I need it to, to, to work um, efficiently in the future, right? It's, it's a weak part, which is why I got injured. And it was a, a long time coming. So I want to make sure that I develop 
uh, the muscles and the strength and the structures around it uh, to help protect it a little bit longer, as, as well as other parts of my body. And I'm sure I'll be fucking injured again in three months, so that's kind of like how I roll. Why? Because like we talked about before, I just have tons of inflammation from food, um, and I know that is definitely a factor because I've been testing. I've been testing, man, and like I've been feeling good. I've been feeling hungry. Big difference between good and hungry. I was feeling hungry, um, but my body felt good. And then this weekend, I ate more rice than normal. I had an Oreo. Uh, I had bread, and my body feels like absolute garbage. I feel like I feel like absolute tight. My knuckles hurt again. I feel like I can't turn my body, and I didn't do anything. Right? I feel like I worked out like a monster, and I didn't do anything, which goes to tell you. Your food really does have some big impact, and everyone is different, okay? Everyone is different. So understanding what foods may be causing inflammation for you or may be uh, causing you to stick at some weight, there's a lot of things. You can't go off one base uh, diet plan. You can't go off what used to work. You got to have to kind of test and see by taking some things away and putting them back in later. To see if there's actually, does it actually feel shitty? And if it does, now that's your choice, right? Because some people aren't as strong to, to do it. It's like, no, I'll never give up my, you know, whatever the fuck, my bread. I'm not going to do it. Well, then you're going to be stuck for a long time, right? You're going to be stuck. I don't want to give up rice. I give up rice. I'm Filipino. And I fucking gave up rice. I'm Asian. Do you know what our blood's made out of? Rice and vinegar. That's what our bloods and pork, pork, rice, vinegar, sweet plantains. That's what my blood is made out of. And I don't eat any of them <laughs> because I would, because <laughs> I have to take those away. I'm just kidding. I just really, the rice is what I have to get rid of and uh, to learn more about myself. So sometimes you got to do that shit. You know, sometimes you got to do it. What was it? Uh, the party. Uh, party was cool. Um, Kind of got sad, you know? Kind of got sad during that time because... What did I know? Oh, burgers. I kind of got sad because it used to be us. Fucking got me again, you know? The past fucking crept up on me. And the parties used to be us. Crank. It used to be fun. And just being there and... Not having to run a party was weird. You know, not having to be a host at a party and make sure the drinks were out and all the food was there and the grill was on and the kids were having a good time and no one's spilling cake everywhere, which always fucking happens anyway at a crank party. Uh, make sure there's ice and then cleaning up afterwards and everyone asking to help me and I say no and I tell them to get the fuck out of here and I do it all by myself and then I would clean the next morning. Uh, it was just like a routine that I kind of missed, man. Like, and it, it got me. It got me. And I sit there and I just really watched, you know, and then my kids were there. So it was cool. I got my, brought my kids um, after like, a little bit, gave them some time and they loved it. They had a great time running around uh, the mats, putting on boxing gloves and, you know, hitting each other and hitting other kids and other kids hitting them. It was awesome. It was really cool uh, to see. And then me and Nat just kind of sat there. We talked and, you know, talked to some people here and there. But basically more of the outsider type thing looking in, you know, looking into the to the party. Whereas I used to be the center of the party, right? I used to be the center of the event, the man that held it all together. And it was just very odd that it wasn't me this time. But uh, at the same time, I, this is actually where I use a skill. I go, man, you know what I'm grateful for? I'm grateful that I don't have to clean rice off the mats. <laughs> because fucking rice was always in the mats. Always in the mats. Always rice. Everywhere. And then there would be like buttery cake that I couldn't get off the mats because it was too much butter that it just, it was hard to clean. Um, but I was grateful for the moments that I didn't have to do that, you know? And I'm grateful for the moment that I got to actually sit down and just observe 
versus losing my mind trying to make sure everyone's okay. So that was different. I'm sorry for you guys that are on YouTube watching and, you know, it keeps cutting out, but the camera died. I, I don't know. I put in a brand new battery in there, so something's going to be happening to this camera sooner or later, right? It's is from 2000. It's a great camera. It's from 2000. 10 so it was probably made i believe in 2008 or 9 um new 70s i believe it's 2009 the canon 70s came out so that's when it's from you know and i uh i ain't buying a new one i ain't buying a new one right now i ain't buying a new one right now let's look up the word this is the one thing that i'm going to work on today i just don't forget how to say this because i think this is important you know I think it's important for recovery. I think it's important for anyone that is. That's not. Come on. Come on. Give me one. So I, I believe this is just a very important part of recovery. And in anything you do. In any type of, I guess, search of happiness. Right? Happiness is obviously mental. Right? You can be happy anywhere. But I'm just talking in general. The, the feeling of fulfillment, I guess. Feeling like uh, your worth something but you can't find self-worth right we can't find we can't be happy with ourselves until we forgive things you know and i want to talk about forgiveness because forgiveness is something that i don't think i've i've done very well and that's not like i can someone can kill me and I would forgive them faster than me forgiving myself for something that I've done. Ain't that some shit? It's easier for me to forgive someone else than it is for me to forgive any action that I've done for myself. I, it's very difficult for me to forgive myself for being lazy in my head, right? For fucking things up, for doing something a little off than you normally do. From something in the past that you have no control over. For something in the past that you did have control over, but maybe you've made a different decision in doing so. But we hold on to it. And I want to see if there's a definition. What's the true meaning of forgiveness? Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Interesting. That's one. Let's see another. The action or process of forgiving. I, I always hate those definitions. The action or process or forgiving or being forgiven. Thanks. You really helped me understand that fucking word. You just use the same word in an entire sentence. For, what's forgiveness? The action of forgiveness is forgiving the forgiven forgiven. Wow. That's interesting. That's not a fucking definition. That doesn't help anyone. <laughs> How do I start forgiveness? <laughs> Pretty much, um, it's impossible. I know it's also impossible to forgive someone or something. Ugh, what? I forgot. I already lost my thought. Something with a past, and I can't think of it anymore. That's all right. It's okay. I'm looking, I'm looking, heal the trauma. Yeah. It's completely possible to heat the trauma pretending you haven't given. Symbol of forgiveness. What's a symbol? Is a symbol for forgiveness? A purple high nacho. What's that? I don't know what that means. I definitely didn't say the word properly, but I like this one. This five steps to forgiveness, it says. Let's click this one. Five steps to forgiveness. This is from thriveworks.com. Obviously, it's not mine, right? Uh, number one. I'm just going to go through the steps that they say. One, reflect the situation. Two, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Three, choose to learn from the experience. Four, let it go. Five, decide where you want to go from here. I think that's super important. Decide where you want to go from here. Because it's hard, right? Because you were stuck in that, that traumatic episode or that time and period, and you're stuck there. You're stuck in that past moment, and you, you don't want to let it go. You know, forgiving is really allowing the past moment to be let go. I think that's what I was going to say before. 
think so. Like forgiving is like, here's what happened. Fuck it. Right? Fuck it. Leave it alone. That's it's fucking gone. Right? All it's gonna do is gonna it's gonna eat you up inside. It's gonna eat your inside. It's gonna eat your heart. Right? It's gonna eat your fucking soul. Just just eating you away the past. The past is something that just it can always be bad. Right? It can always be shitty. It always be not it always be someone else's fault. It could always be something that, that annoyed you or beat you up. But now it's your job. It's your job to let it go. In this process or the stage of forgiveness, you have we have to let that go. And listen, I'm talking like when I'm talking, it's I'm fucking talking right here. Like I'm talking to me. Like I, I'd rather just say, Pete, you gotta fucking let this shit go. And I, that's what I should say. Oh, I judge myself. That's what I'm gonna say. You know, just let it go. But I think the best part is right here. Decide where you want to go from here. Where do you want to go from here? Let's read the paragraph. Now that you've let go, it's up to you to decide where do you go from here. It's, is this someone else you want to keep in your life? Is this, don't ask me questions, asshole. You may decide you may want to repair your relationship with the person who betrayed you, but that's great. But you also decide to forgive and then remove them for your life, and that's okay too. Very interesting. Very interesting. You can keep people in your life. See, where do you want to go? Like, what do you want to do? What's your plan after you let it go? And I feel like, I don't know. For me, look, 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 right? I can't even answer it because that's something I have to sit down and think about. I can't just make that up on the spot. That would be fucking impulsive. That would be me just saying, yeah, this is, this is a great idea. This is probably what, this is, here's an idea that I think you guys would like to hear. Ain't that some shit? Because that's probably would be the answer that I would give if I was impulsive. Like, Pete, where do you want to go from here? Well, let's tell, the, let's tell people what I think they want me to hear. Versus, like, what do I really want to hear? What do I really want to get out of this, this process of, of healing? And that's going to take time. So if you want to walk away from something today, here it is. Find something, there's something in your life that's holding you back, right? Something in the past that just, we hold on to it. We hold on to the fucking past like it's, it's gold, right? Word is bond. Like, it's like this is something that's never breakable, but it is. You can break anything by showing forgiveness. Forgive yourself for what you've done. Forgive the person for what they've done, no matter how bad or how shitty it is because without forgiving that person or thing or group we're never never going to move on god i gotta click i know exactly who i have to forgive i know exactly so i'm i don't have much time so when i was in high school i had a gun put to my head to my back because they wanted my friend's jacket and since that moment, I hate people. I hate groups of people. I'm scared of people. I'm very um, paranoid. Like I, th- I think when I walk my dog out here, that someone's going to shoot me. Ain't that weird? I keep saying that today. Ain't that weird? No. If I walk the dog right outside my apartment, and the car is pretty busy little street over here, there's a lot of times I feel like someone's going to shoot me with a fucking gun. I don't, I don't know why. Because of that moment. And a lot of that moment has created a lot of reasons why I'm in shape, though. Right? The main reason why I started losing weight, getting into shape, because I don't want anyone to have... I never want to feel... Ever, I never want to feel that helpless again. You know how helpless it is today? I'm sure some of you out there do. But a fucking gun is... To you, as a teenager, is not a fucking fun feeling. It's a pretty shitty feeling. And it scared me till now. And still does. Because that moment, they would call a traumatic moment. Or a point of trauma in your life. And uh, that's who I'm going to forgive. And work on forgiving. But where do I go from there? And that's going to be the question that has to be answered. 
and I will tell you in episode number 49. So I'll see you guys later. This is Pete. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, Hopefully you learned more about me today, and hopefully I will learn more about you. Probably not, but if you reach out, I sure I will. All right, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for coming out, and uh, have a great, great week. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from Pete, you can follow him on Instagram at Pete Isop. Thanks again, and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.